Want to learn how I turned this into this? Hang around, I'll teach you. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. Today I'm making diamond string blocks like these, step by step. Come on, let's get started. To make these string blocks, you need the following. Everything but the strings is linked below. So number one, you need strings. What are strings? Strings are these little leftover strips from the ends of where you're squaring up fabric or trimming off, trimming off uneven bits. It's the little shreddy stuff that a lot of people think is trash. It's uneven, it's too thin to sew into a block or to cut down to other scraps. It's the leftover garbage. All right, but we're gonna make it beautiful. For today's blocks, I have chosen colors based off of this color cube card. So I have blacks, black and white and gray, and then my pops of bright color. Next, you need foundation materials. What can you use? You can use copy paper or thin copy paper, thin printer paper. You can use trusty phone book pages, though these are hard to come by, or similar paper. This is from a catalog. Another great resource are food wrappers. I've talked about these before. These are little parchment pages. And those come, look, they come in all different sizes. Or you can use fabric, muslin, old fabric, ugly fabric. Just be careful about how vibrant the print is and what colors you're using on top of it so that you don't see it through your actual blocks. And if you're using fabric, you don't have to tear it out at the end. You can also make the blocks without a foundation. I just find it easier to use one. Next, a glue stick or pins. I use an Elmer, this is an Amazon version, but I use the Elmer's school glue. Anything that says school glue is food grade starch. It will not change your fabric at all. I don't like the purple ones, but whatever you've got works. I also use a dry iron. I use this Rowenta travel iron because it's easy to set up beside my sewing machine, but any iron works, just don't put water in it. Of course you need your sewing machine and you want a brand new sharp needle. Microtex, Top Stitch. I like these from Superior, the um, titanium coated, and you want a size 9014 or 116. A jeans needle works really well. You want something with a very sharp point that's going to make a rather large hole. For this block in specific, you need a ruler and a pencil. And of course, you need your rotary cutter. Now let's get right to the good stuff. To make the diamond string blocks, you need a rectangular base. Any size works, but it has to be a rectangle or you get a square on point rather than an elongated diamond. And you have to have them marked across the center. See, I've got it marked right there. Across the center in opposite directions so that when they come together, you can see those lines come together like that, you get the diamond shape. Okay, and here I'm going to put my string. I'm going to measure and make sure, and then I'm just going to trim it. These are off cuts from the Cotton Cut Scraps program, the Puzzle Mystery Quilt program. You can get in their scrap club and they send you a bag of scraps every month for about $10. And here is where I use the magic of a glue stick. All purpose, school glue, washable. And I'm just gonna go right down this line a couple of times, super easy. You can use a pin here, you can hold it, and generally just hold it to start is what I do. But since I want that diamond shape to be fairly regular, I go ahead and just tack it down with glue stick. I just tack it down with glue stick. You can hit it with a dry iron if you want. Uh, that's an important feature. If you're working with a paper foundation that you're going to remove, use a dry iron. You do not want any steam. It will make the paper all crinkle up and get gross and distort your block. Then, I mean, it's just a matter of finding a piece, finding the string you want to come next. So this one is right side up. 
it's batik, so it's hard to tell. But this one, the center fabric goes right side up. The next strip goes right side facing. Let's give it a little press. And then you just stitch. Now I have lowered my stitch length down to about 1.3. You want it pretty small. You want it small enough that it's easy to tear away the paper, but not so small that the paper starts falling off while you're still working. I have had that happen. It, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it's, it's not ideal. So just adjust accordingly. And then see my line right here is not exact because the string on the bottom, the colorful one, is cut wonky, which is how most strings are, which is fine. So I'm just going to use the edge of my presser foot, and it's just my regular presser foot. It's not a quarter inch foot. Seam allowance, as long as you've got enough, is not that big a deal here. I'm just going to run the edge of my presser foot along this top strip so that I get a straight-ish seam. Now, so I don't have to break thread every time, I'm going to find a page that's marked in the opposite direction and I'm going to make, I'm going to work these two at a time. Again, a little stick glue and these are linked down below. Share with your friends because the only way I could find to link them from Amazon, of course you can pick them up at Walmart or Target or, you know, wherever, office supply store. But the only way I could find them at Amazon is in like a 30 pack. I don't like the purple ones. I know they dry clear. It just, I don't know, it wigs me out a little. So I use the ones that don't have any color added. But like I say, the only way I could find them at Amazon was in a 30 pack. So share with your friends, share with your guild. Sell them on eBay, you know, or maybe you just want to make a lot of string blocks. And I work these two at a time so that I don't have to break thread in between. These have enough thread going on on their own without adding more. Now here's my biggest tip. My biggest tip is before you press anything, go ahead and run both sides. Saves you just a little bit of time, but when you're making a bunch of these, a little bit of time on each block adds up. These little bits here, I don't worry about them. I just leave them in there. They're fine. They're not gonna hurt anything. Now I will flip this one back and add another strip before I press. Now flip this one back and you can finger press it if you want. Just, you know, get it to stay out of your way. You're going to cut. See, and here you can see I've got the selvage. I honestly in string blocks don't care if the selvage gets in the block, but I'm going to measure off the edge of the page and clip. And then I have this piece for another, for the next block. This piece. My strings are a mess, so I'm just going to give it a quick little press. Nothing major. And here I've got both pieces, one to each side, and now I'll press. Press this one out. And you do want to press these. I'm generally not a fan of pressing things until you absolutely need to. So I'll sew four patches, you know, all the way to the end and press them all at the end when they're joined instead of pressing two by two. But you do want to press these. Otherwise, if you have, if you just finger press it and stitch the next one, you're going to get some bubbling right here where this fabric relaxes and your block won't be as precise when you tear all the paper off. Now, if you're not working with the foundation, or if you're working with a foundation that you're leaving in, a muslin foundation, it's not that big a deal. You can finger press it and, and get away with it because any bubbling that happens in that strip will be attached to the foundation because your foundation is staying in and that's your stabilizing piece. Now next, let's see, how about some gray? So you, you see my wad of stuff back here. Oh, look, it's... Da Vinci's sketch of a man. We're gonna focus. Oh. 
awesome. It's a mess. My space is a work. My workspace is a mess. That's how string blocks are. They're just, I mean, you're making fabric out of essentially trash. I'm not super concerned if my block, if my seam wobbles as I go through it, it all works out. It all works out. Press this. And I am working on one of the OmniGrid Fold and Go. I'll link it below. I love this thing. It sits right here beside my machine when I need it to. It's easy to travel with. Okay, now see how wide this one is? I don't really want that wide piece right here. So I'm gonna cut it and then I'm just gonna cut it. And it doesn't have to be straight. That's, you know, none of these are straight. That's part of the beauty of it is the irregularity. Now, if you prefer the regularity of cut strips, go for it, I mean, it's your quilt. And sometimes I'll come in at an angle so I don't have to stitch through all of this waste piece at the end. I'll come in at an angle, put my needle down and then pivot it back so that I get a straight, straightish line. So I did that one, that one was this gray. I'm gonna use the other piece of, oh, I'm gonna use this gray right here. This, oh, this is kind of a linen. It's a little janky, so I'll press it. That's not entirely necessary. And if you notice right there, what I just did, my seam was going a little crooked because I've got my, my pressing surface here, but I just adjusted it. That means, yeah, my seam line's gonna be a little organic, but that's fine. It works out. You can flip, here, let me see. You can sort of lay it on and flip it back to make sure it is going to cover the entire piece because when they're short, it's not great. <laughs> Coming in at an angle so I don't have to sew through that entire extra bit at the end that's going to get cut off. If your seam is crooked, do not even worry about it. It adds to the charm of the string block. Oh, that fabric is thick. I like it. And then pressing both pieces out. And now, see the extra piece, the extra color from the sample block, show you the finished block. The extra color here, this piece, I don't measure that, I don't mark that piece. I just look at it and go, oh yeah, now it feels right. If you wanna mark it, if you want it more regular, if you want the diamond in the diamond to be more precise, mark it. It's, you know, whatever you are comfortable with, this is what I do. Well, that, eh, that'll fit, but it's a little wide. So I'm just gonna trim off Actually, I think it's a salvage right here anyway. So that, that, that little bit, actual waste. Oh, it's a little tight, but it'll be fine. Seam allowance will fix it. A colorful strip in when, you know, when it suits me. This is really frayed on the edge. So instead of leaving that all in, because that is a risk for losing your seam. If it's not stable on your edge, you know, you don't want to sew into that and depend on it for your seam allowance because it's frayed. So, you know, just, just trim it out. Or you could just put, you could just start and stitch your piece, your next string further in. Like I say, it's just a matter of feel for me, feel on these blocks, but you can mark it. You can mark two lines when you're marking that first one. Not a big. If your string, say you've marked the line for where you want this piece and say your string covered it up, either just sew it where you've marked the line and leave the excess seam allowance or trim it back before you sew this piece. No big deal. That's the real thing about all of this is it's not that serious. None of it's that serious. And like you've heard me say before, I am serious about quilting, but I do not take quilting too seriously.
I wish I were more that way in other areas of my life, but it's a work in progress. See, this one won't fit because it doesn't come to the end. Oh, that'll work. Sometimes I trim out the selvage, sometimes I don't. If it's cute, I'll leave it in there. If it's got the little color dots, I leave it in there. But you know, this one just ends, so I'll trim it out. You're not matching points, you're not having to turn that back in a way that needs to meet something with precision. So a thicker selvage in there is not going to is not going to harm anything and it adds a lot of visual interest. When I pull that piece, I'll show you something. So now you just, I mean, this is it. Stitch and flip, press. Stitch and flip and press. And like I say, I take the two steps and stitch on either side or both sides so that it saves me a step in between. Now on this last one, let's see if we can see it. Can you see my seam line? Can you see how crooked my seam line is? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And press it. Ah, see in here, I hit the paper and so it's starting to fall apart. So I'll be a little cautious with that on the next seam. You don't want your paper falling off while you're still sewing. It's not the end of the world, but it just, it makes it easier if it all stays together. <laughs> and here on the corner, I can do a couple of things. I don't want seams running all the way into this corner because that's gonna create a lot of bulk when I put my blocks together. So what I can do is I have these pieces that have corners. I don't like this fuzzy part of the bind of the salvage in my quilt, so I'm just gonna get rid of most of that. If you join your binding strips with a miter corner, you have all those little cutoff triangles. This is a great place to use some of those, if you're, especially if you're working with smaller blocks. But here, I don't need to cut that edge straight. I'm just gonna hang it over and remember where my edge is. I can feel it. Here, I'm just gonna use this triangle of fabric and cover my corner. Because I was sewing blind, I will check that before I press it one. I'm gonna cut one of these in half. I love this fabric. I like it with that yellow, that little pop of gold in there. It's great. So. Because I was sewing blind here, I will check and yeah, make sure that I got I caught all the edges and that, yes, I did in fact cover my corner. I don't worry about bias. I don't worry about any of that because it is on this foundation. So while I'm working with it, it's not that big a deal. And then when I'm piecing the block together, the blocks together into the quilt top, it gives me a little flexibility. And there's enough give and enough seams in these things that it just doesn't make that big a deal. It all works out. One of the beauties of working these blocks, working any string blocks of any size, two at a time, is that it's sort of compelling. It's one of those things that keeps you moving, it keeps you motivated. I am, look guys, I'm gonna break my own rule because I want this black and white stripe in there. I am going to put a seam. See, but it's not all the way in the corner. The next seam will be about right here, which is enough. But sometimes you need a little black and white stripe in your life. Oh, but what I was saying is they sort of propel you forward because you're doing this one and then the next one and the next step. So to me, when you're working with these two at a time, sort of chasing each other through the machine, yes, you're not having to cut your thread every time or put a leader ender in between it, but it's also, you know, it, it kind of motivates you, keeps you motivated. That one is complete. I'll show you the magic in just a minute. The magic really happens when you cut them. Now, I will start to continue my chasing sequence. I will start another block. Where did my purple strings go? Okay, there. Again, with the glue stick, just a couple of little swipes of glue. Easy peasy. Right there. 
This time, because my iron is hot, I will hit it with the iron. And guys, that doesn't stick in the end when I go to peel the papers, it just pops right off. Not an issue at all. This is the time consuming part. Not really deciding on the fabric, but finding a piece that fits. This will work just fine. I mean, sometimes it might be deciding on the fabric, but I don't worry too much about that. I made those decisions at the beginning, like I taught in my breakdown class. If you want to see that video, it's linked in the cards. See, sometimes you need a little black and white stripe in your life. I have a nice wide piece of black here. And then I need another. Mm, see, that one doesn't fit. The biggest issue with the when you're working and making string blocks, guys, is threads and bits and lint everywhere. Also, when you're working with strings, you're gonna have to change your needle more often. Going through this paper really dulls your needle and you definitely wanna clean out your machine because it's pushing all that fiber. It's just creating a lot of dust. They're kinda messy. Let's use this little thin piece. See, most people would throw this piece of fabric away. Off cut trim, they throw it away. I throw it in a bucket and use it for this. So look, there was a rather significant correction right here, but it's no big deal. Watch what happens. I'm gonna press it out and it's gonna be fine. So when I press that out, I mean, it's, it's no big deal. It, you can't even see it. Not even an issue. Let's go with these little light bulbs. Those are cute. Let's see if they'll fit. Yes. Black covers the corner. Now I need something to cover this corner. I do try to not repeat my colors within the block just because it adds more interest. I also try to not end up with the same color on a lot of corners because those corners are going to meet and you'll end up with like a, a large patch of that, that one color in the middle. Let's see, will this piece cover? Not quite. You have a wide enough piece of this. I can just cut a chunk of it off. Works great. Now I am going to cut my thread here because I need to. I'll just put this guy aside for next time. I'll pull back my one that we've been working on. Press that out. Yes, covered the corner. Beautiful. Now here is where the magic happens. And look, I can just flip my board right over cutting surface. All right, I love this thing. All right, you gotta turn it to the back. You gotta make sure all your little corners and pieces are intact. You're gonna take your ruler and your rotary, new rotary blade that I don't know how to open, push the button. So now I'm just gonna line up on my edge. I, I'm not super precise about this. This is not that kind of a project. Line up on my edge. And just trim all this away. Trash, I save a lot of things, but this stuff, I don't. I have to draw a line somewhere. And that's it. And someone moved my trash can. <laughs> okay, now, I've trimmed it up. But look. <gasps> it's so magic! that it goes from this ugly, horrible, blobby looking thing to this beauty. All right, let me do the next one, let me do it, let me do it. All right, my paper's torn right here, not a problem. I'm just gonna make sure that it's still lined up and I'm gonna trim. I'm getting a little bit of the edge of the paper there where, they're, where it's offset and stuff, it, no big deal. Like I said, it's not a precision project. And 
and there you go. And because I did opposite lines, I have blocks that meet in the diamond. And these guys, see, you do it by feel and they, they match up. All right, if you sewed on a muslin foundation, you're done. Go sew your blocks. If, like me, you used a paper, paper foundation, now you just tear all this stuff out and recycle or compost or put it in the waste. Okay, my camera battery died. Sorry guys. If you have a seam that's a little bit stubborn, that's where this bias comes in a little handy, give it a little tug, comes right open. Now this is the one that is glued down. Not an issue, not an issue at all. You're gonna tug it, it's gonna come right out, look. No paper stuck to it at all. Doesn't even leave uh, residue on my, doesn't even leave residue on my fabric. But now you have diamond blocks and you can put them with your other diamond blocks. When you start putting them all together, let's see if I can zoom out. Here we go. I gotta find one that's the right angle. Not that one. This one. Here we go. And you just keep going like that. That is all there is to it. String blocks. Beautiful blocks. Beautiful entire quilts from trash. From something, from little bits that most people would throw away. I love string blocks. They are such an old fashioned technique, but can have a decidedly contemporary aesthetic if desired. And they're a great way to play with color and texture. I love the process of turning what many consider garbage into something useful and cool. And I love that string blocks are inherently unique. No two blocks will ever look exactly the same. And that's exciting. I've linked several books below to give you tons of ideas and patterns. So check those out and give string blocks a try. Be sure and check out the video on your screen and never, never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.